say sorry, but I'm not taking on my glasses. Lockyer takes a shot, it's low! He's got it! I think he's got it! Merlin, are you going to speak? But for me, it was a winner. David? Well, I'm afraid it wasn't for me, Margaret. Thank God you're here. Grandma's been raped. On. Welcome back to On The Air Tonight, the number one podcast that reviews free-to-air television. He's Tom. That's Jacob. And we're back. Another week in the box. Mm -hmm. Episode 34, ladies and gentlemen. This week we bring you some content straight off Nine Now's On Demand, or Channel Nine's On Demand service. Nine Now. Nine Now, your free home of entertainment, as they like to remind us. Yeah, the, the wide world of sports and other content. Um, sports, a current affair, mm -hmm. and choppery documentaries. Exactly right. Yeah, death, taxes, and choppery docos, the, as, the, as the old adage says. The three goes. guarantees in life. Yep. Um, how are you? Yeah, I'm well. <laughs> I'm doing real good. We burnt, Happy days. We, we burnt all of our energy out trying to get ourselves pumped up in the show. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the opposite effect where we spaz out prior to try and, you know, bring some of that vibe into the show, mm. but we just burn all of our fucking energy <laughs> beforehand and then we're flat as a tack after we press record. It's better than smashing a wine glass halfway yeah. through. But, Those um, days are behind us. Yeah. Yeah, we've learned. I, I drink out of sippy cups now. <laughs> we've, we've baby proofed this system. Um, but no, I'm, I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, had a lovely weekend. It was relatively low key. Actually picked up a picked up a new car. There's a yeah. Car, there's an uh, Oats Hatmobile 2.0. Yeah, Big Wheels. Mm. It's Jacob's new name. Yeah, Professor X. Big, yeah, <laughs> Professor X <laughs> with working legs. Yes. And yeah. a brain <laughs> fucking half as big. Yeah, so not Professor X at all. That's probably being generous, giving you half. Professor Beta. Yeah. No mind powers, but working legs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's good. That is very good. And uh, also uh, have had a, a week in the, in the new gig. Uh, Tom and I, the, the two co-hosts of Oritata, mm -hmm. are under the same roof for 40 hours a week. Well, I mean, when Tom bothers to come into the office. <laughs> Work from home. Yeah. That's a th yeah, so because of... So Jacob started, what, two weeks ago now? Yeah, it'll be last Monday, or like the, mo the Monday before last Monday after this episode. Yeah, so you, but you've worked a week and one day now. Yeah, at the time of recording? Yes, yep. yeah, now. Um, I, at the time of recording, I have worked from home the whole time because most of the office is mm. COVID. It's not just you're avoiding me. No. <laughs> you, you didn't hear there's a new kid on the block. You're like, oh, I don't want my lunch money to get fucking pinched. It's scary guys, quite tall. <laughs> Um, so he, Jake started and I haven't been there. So, but today I went in for a couple of hours and I actually saw him under the same roof. I was like, Hey dude, G'day, mate. I know you from outside of here. <laughs> you you, you did already ingratiate me through, uh, through like a, we have like a Skype meeting where it's a full staff meeting. We had that last Friday and, um, my manager was like, Oh, and welcome to the team, Jacob. Uh, you'll see him walk around the office. He's a, another tall bloke, so you, you'll be able to spot him. And then Tom posted in like the, the chat for the video, like, yeah, he's got big feet too. <laughs> the chat that no one uses. This is going out to like 80 people in the office. It's mm -hmm. not really a, 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 a um, platform for like funny banter. No. It's kind of like everyone's on their best behavior. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just like, huge feet too. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Fuck, dude. It's like nine o'clock in the morning and Tom's already seven beers deep. <laughs> Everyone's half asleep, so I'm like, sorry, bro. And no one knows that I know you. Like, a lot of people wouldn't know no. that I know you. So they're just like, why is Tom roasting the new guy <laughs> about his feet? All right, Tom, you just get called into HR the next week. Yeah. You're like, Tom, you can't bully the new employee. Yeah, I've been waiting for him. I'll be like, no, I know him. <laughs> and he's got massive feet, so. I'm yeah. not lying. Look not, at his Reeboks. I'm not wrong, mate. And I didn't mean anything else by it. He's they just to, got big feet. They had to get rid of the desk opposite him because he was kicking the yep. person out. Yeah. Fucking, wait till we see his hog as well. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm compensating with the new car, put it that way. Yeah. Tiny penis. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but uh, yeah, I've been good, mate. How, are you, how have you been? Yeah, good. We were, um, we were chatting. Uh, it's good having your work. Um, oh, we, yeah. On our first day back today, we were trying to, we, we, we were utilizing the IM system within work, which is Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. um, we were chatting on there, and Jake was saying that he, he's, we're in different teams at work. Mm -hmm. he's, he's TV, I'm radio. 
um, in Jacob's team, they all have nicknames. So Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly, they all have nicknames. So he was trying to figure out what his nickname was going to be at work. Yeah, apparently they were like, oh, Jacob, you've got a, we've got to have a, have you got a nickname? We can call you or like one we can use for you because no one, we don't use actual people's names in this team. I was like, all right. It sounds like the most like forced email fun <laughs> I've fucking heard. No, it sounds like a good time. If anyone's listening from work, I'm sure it's, I'm sure you TV guys have fun over there. More than you radio. Does. We're all just miserable <laughs> roasting each other over the radio. You're trying to create like a positive culture. I'm like, <laughs> just like trying to shoot it right down straight away. Yeah. Just tall poppy in your entire fucking Secretly thing. just want that, want an actual connection <laughs> yeah. with your teammates. That'd be nice. You're like, just jealous that no one's giving you a, a nickname. Yeah, we don't have funny nicknames at work. We just have mean ones. <laughs> <laughs> they just call them that. But... Your nickname's who? <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> that guy. Um, so we were trying to, we were figuring out what your new nickname could be because your real nickname is Poopy mm-hmm. um, outside of work. Yeah. But that's probably not appropriate. Yeah, they did ask me, they're like, oh, have you got any nicknames? I was like, not one that's credible for work. Like, nothing that could be actually used that I feel like is... I mean, it, I could, it could be, but it's like... Still still got that first week freshness mm. on me where I'm like, I don't want the perception <laughs> where my nickname's Poopy in the office. <laughs> so you didn't tell him your real nickname is... Turd. No, but my mom, my direct report, Jace knows. He's just like, can I just say what it is? <laughs> it's like, if you want, you just didn't. Good. Um, sign of a good boss. Yeah, so... Um, you... but, but we, sorry, we, we did Please. run through some <laughs> possible nicknames mm-hmm. um, that you might be known for in the office um, in the next couple I of weeks. I think JP was, was thrown out there. Yeah, JP Morgan. JP Morgan, yeah, sure. <laughs> I think they're a real estate firm. Yeah, it's... Uh, Real estate or funeral or like home, law or something like that. Like yeah. some real boring industry. It's the only thing that I can think of that starts with JP. Yeah, all right. So you're JP Morgan. I guess so. Yeah. Um, we had uh, Grego. Grego. Yep. We had Big Wheels. Big Wheels. <laughs> You've got a new car. <laughs> all right. That's yep. my favorite. Uh, Paul Blart Moldart. Mm-hmm. Paul Blart Moldart. Yeah. Paul Blart Moldart. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> nah, not at all. Fridge. <laughs> I like fridge. That was yours. <laughs> yeah, I made it up. Fridge because he's this, he's a big dude the size of a fridge and he wants to go to the drinks fridge. At yeah, Friday they've got a, they've shout out to SCA. They've got a drinks fridge at work that becomes unlocked on a on a Friday afternoon. So, so the couple- fridge will be the first one. There. <laughs> um, obviously poopy. Mm-hmm. Um, these are a couple from uh, Quiplash. Shout out Quiplash. If, oh, you, yeah. if you played that game before, you it gets weird. Um, Dr. Smegberg. <laughs> this is a couple of alei that I made after, after a couple of adult beverages yes. last night. Sunday bevs. And mm-hmm. um, Shabop Shalom. Shabop Shalom was yours, and you graciously... And you can have that. Oh, thank you. That's if you want it. Mm. So just to run through them, because, oh, Potat is, if you can leave in the comments your favourite, or if you have any new suggestions, um, we can report back next week and let you know what Jake will Yeah, we'll put out a, when we, once we put out the episode, we'll also put out a, um, like, an Insta story with, like, type poll. in, yeah, yeah, well, you can do the poll, or you can do, like, the, any suggestions. Yeah, gotcha. So if anyone's got any, if you've got a suggestion, um, leave a comment on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, or just send us a DM, just get in contact with us. and Let, let us know what you think is a fitting is a fitting nickname for, for the, poopy other than poopy for the for the lesser half of the of the show yeah <laughs> definitely the lesser <laughs> half um just to remind you you've got dr smegberg poopy shabop shalom grego big wheels jp morgan fridge and paul blood Mulder. you're listening to fridge in the mullet in the morning <laughs> fridge in the mullet bow, 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 bow. <laughs> look at that old yeah. um so that's what Jake's first week at OTA, uh, first week at SCA has been. <laughs> I on. wish it was full time OTA. Thirty four. This is the dream, but yeah, how's how's things been in your world? Um, good. Yeah, I've been all right. Uh, not much has changed for me. I've just been fucking working from home. Mm-hmm. There's no more Olympics on. I watched just on a recap from last week. Mm-hmm. Um, we were speaking about the horse. Yes. That refused to stand up. If you haven't listened to last week's episode, go listen to get some context on what we're talking about, like an equestrian event during the Olympics. There's a clip uploaded, we've put it on the socials of Mm -hmm. that whole bit that we're talking about. German horse refused to partake in the final event of equestrian. Yeah. When we were talking about it last week, I hadn't actually seen the clip and you were describing Mm. it. I went and watched it 
And it is fucking... Like, it's pretty heinous, hey? It's awful. Mm -hmm. Let me break it down. It's awful. Uh, some parts aren't as bad as you said it was. Like, mm. the punch isn't actually a punch. It's more like an open-handed slap. Yeah, you know? and it's like... the Because what's happened since is the German coach of that horse or that equestrian team has been, like, reprimanded or fined or something. As he should be. For punching the horse. Mm. But, like... That would be no harder. It, she punches it in the exact same spot that it's just getting fucking whipped and caned. Like yeah, but one's one's a like a tool to use. I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm splitting hairs hairs here. But splitting horse hairs for sure. Yeah, but that's what, like why do we? It's just so it seems so hypocritical that we get upset about the punch, which would hurt as much. But then it's like fine to just beat the to, shit out to of it. Lash it. Yeah. yeah, and uh, it's a horse hind, so it actually wouldn't hurt that much. Like, I know when they're whipping them, like... And they barely feel it. They barely feel it, but it's just because it looks different and mm. bad. It's, it's still it's still trouble. assault. Yeah, yeah, it is. But she's, you know, she just kind of lays a, a... It's not it's not a S, you know, it's, it's like a, a... It's a hammer like a, fist. Yeah, it's a bit of a hammer fist into mm. the hind of this horse. Um, so I don't think the punch was that bad. She's just trying to get the horse going. Mm. But all of that is under the umbrella of, like, it's a fucking horror movie. Mm. Like, this horse is just, like... Walk trotting around, not wanting, trying to rear the like the rider, trying off. to get the rider off it, yeah, mm. not doing what the rider wants it to, and the rider on top of it is this young girl who's in tears, mm. like she's so upset. Yeah, the horse is clearly distressed. The woman on it is like having a great time, yeah, and yeah. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> How is this a sport? This is a, it's a spirit of competition, the Olympics. <laughs> I guess animal like, abuse and tears. <laughs> what other sport is there? Just like everyone's crying and upset, uh, and NRL. nothing's going right. Well, yeah, but <laughs> that'll cry because they're blocks. Um, it was just a crazy sight, and I was like, as someone who doesn't understand the world of equestrian or horse riding at mm. all, like I'm sure there's a lot that I'm not getting, but. I don't really know how you can argue that that's uh, like good for anyone involved, including the horse. You know, mm. People are like, oh, the horse. There's always someone who's like, the horses aren't. They don't feel it that much. Or like, it's the same reason of like, oh, a fish. Fish don't have feelings, so it doesn't yeah. matter if you kill them. Yeah. Oh, you can like eat pigs because they uh, they're they're not that smart. Mm. Well, it's like there's always someone always justifies, you know, they're not sentient. An yeah. 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 Oh, you eat you eat uh, vegetables, don't they have brains? <laughs> Do you feel they're, bad about the broccoli that you kill? They're all alive, aren't they? Yeah. They're sentient. Checkmate vegans. Yeah, you fucking... <laughs> Going against your own people, mate. What about the broccoli dads and the little broccoli sons? <laughs> you circle, you tore them away from their family? <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> fucking, any more questions from the peanut gallery? <laughs> from the, from the anti-vegan brigade? <laughs> what about nuts? They got feelings too, mm, dude. Yep. Don't crack open their shell, right? No. they got a family to go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking pop as peanuts, dudes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just... Uh, you, I think that's that on display is like, oh, no one's having a good time. No. And I, cha like, I challenge someone to justify it. This is my Steven Crowder moment. Um, equestrian is bad. Changed my mind. Yeah, changed my mind. I mean, yeah, like, it's, it's hard because it, it's weird having, like, the, the, one, of the, one of the events... Where, yes, the the athlete is obviously the one who wins gold and mm -hmm. is the one doing all the training and stuff. But you're you don't have like at, at a certain point you don't have control over it. Like every other event, yeah. surfing, shooting, running, swimming, whatever it is, fucking ring ring dance or what is it? Uh, what was it? Ribbon dancing. Um, it was ribbon, artistic gymnastics. Artistic gymnastics of <laughs> ribbon dancing. <laughs> ribbon <laughs> ribbon running. <laughs> Rubbing, <laughs> remain. Um, you've got full control over whether you how you perform, but like yes. with the equestrian, it's you. Your it ultimately relies on on the, the the steed that you're on. Yes, and if the steed's having a bad day mm -hmm. and he's going, I'm not fucking doing it because it doesn't understand it's at the Olympics. Yeah, or maybe it does. And it's like I'm not. I'm not doing this. Yeah, this is my time. Yeah, biggest day of your life, jockey. Mm. I'm gonna fuck it for you. Bow bow. Get the fuck off me. <laughs> And she eventually, like, gets through, like, gets it on its way and, like, you know, gets it going where she wants it to. Again, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, so mm. whatever that's called. Yeah. Uh, but she gets it going and then it, like, clears one and then goes up to the next one, pulls up halfway through as the jockey's still in tears. Woo! She's like, oh, <laughs> this sucks. 
You're getting so passionate about this, you need to rein it in, mate. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> All right, throw more horse puns at me, that'll do it. <laughs> I guess so. You, you can't just keep yelling into your horse, mate. Okay, yeah. I'm not fucking... Nay, I won't. Mm-hmm, mm. mm-hmm. Um, so we'll tr- we'll trot along to the to the next segment, which is reading out the the comments. Uh, we've we've gotten a few reviews or a couple of reviews this week. So if you do enjoy the show, uh, you can leave us a comment on YouTube, as I mentioned before, or um, send us a DM with your review of the show, um, and we'll read it out just like we do today. With um, firstly with our residential reviewer, the one, the only smoked paprika. Um, uh, yeah. With, actual name is part Australian, part Chinese. Yes. Um, Colloquially known as smoked pap. Yes. Um, and we've doxed him too many times, so I won't do it again. But um, Pap writes, Sorry, but Tom finishes ahead again. What are you doing to me? We didn't start a tally. That's at least two to me. Finishes head ag- ahead again. Raise a sharp analysis of the 2020 Olympics. His father, his father mentions in the podcast, his father he mentions in the podcast makes more sense than anyone I've heard in a long time. His view of surfing, BMX, skateboarding, and other retarded sports having no place in the Olympics shows crystal clear thinking. It waters down the value of the gold medal. Like letting Disney at Star Wars, sacrilege. Peace out. Oh, Lance, you're, you are, you are losing credibility by the second, my friend. First thing, voting for your own son. Second thing, talking about yourself in third person. Third thing, using the word retarded. <laughs> retarded. <laughs> Dad, that's not cool anymore, dude. And then also the saying that the sports that don't count in the Olympics are the ones that Australia is the best at. Surfing, BMX, skateboarding. It's it's, it's the one that the Gold Coast is best at, for mm. sure. BMX, BMXing and skateboarding. Exactly, in between punching canes. <laughs> but um, also, no five stars this week. Where are you? What's going on? I think that's just assumed at this point, but I would still like it to be reinforced. You know what? Pick your game up. Pick your game up, Lance. I don't, I don't think he actually voted for me as the best. I think he voted for himself. Yeah, you know I, mean, what I mean, like he spent the first sentence being like, "Yeah, great stuff." Razor sharp analysis from Tom, and mm. the rest of it was just like, "His father is so intelligent and makes so many good points, and is crystal clear in the head." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's and it's very much anytime he votes for you, it's like I'm. You know, I actually made Tom, yeah. so anytime I embellish Tom, I'm actually embellishing myself. Yeah. Never lets me forget the ball sack that I came out of. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's always about him somehow. To, to take it back to the Olympics, you're showing a gymnastic level of flexibility to suck your own dick, Lance. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, Dude, he has to hear this. Love you, smoke that. <laughs> love you, mate. <laughs> Keep him coming. Keep him coming. <laughs> It's all good stuff. And we also got a, a follow-up to the application from the, the one, the only, Keith Slimcock. Keith Slimcock. You might have heard us last time. Uh, have you have you been losing sleep at night wondering what the T word was still? Bigger and better T. Bigger and better T. It was... Things. Terrestrials. Oh, Terrestrials. Yeah. Things. Well, we're about to find out. We're all about right. to find out. Um, but this is the follow-up to the half review that we got last week. Excellent. Uh, from Keith... <clears throat> excuse me. Mm. From Keith Slimcock. Hey boys, how the fuck are you? F W A R K. Sorry I haven't been in contact. I've been pretty busy with my new gig. Since being shunned for the role of young Jamie on OTAT, I've moved on to bigger and better things. Okay, alright. Good. The wait is over. We can sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm currently working at Netflix in the accounts receivable department, ironically enough. Just as an unpaid intern at the moment, but you can bet your ass I can make a mean frappuccino. Right. Now, now, don't worry. I still find time to listen to the weekly pod. It's frowned upon here at Netflix HQ, as I'm sure you can imagine, but that doesn't stop me. Love hearing you two blogs bicker about anything and everything, and I reckon your content of late has stepped up a notch. Mm, okay. Mm. Thoughts on adding a soundboard into the mix? I think it would add some much-needed flair. <laughs> Just a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> uh <Uh-oh. laughs> Just, I love how he goes from... Uh, like it's been you've stepped it up a notch of late it's fantastic mm-hmm. too it needs a much needed flair you know you've stepped it up now you really need to step it up yeah you need some assistance um, just before I get off the shitter and head back to work <laughs> right to the new cubicle Keith what are you doing <laughs> in there slim cock open up are you writing reviews for a free to <laughs> program again I hope it's a Netflix show <laughs> My wife, uh, just before I get off the shitter and head back to work, my wife Phyllis was wondering about your relationship <laughs> status. Reckons you both aren't too hard on the eyes. Cr- 
crazy old bat. <laughs> your wife? Keep a, keep a fucking a close eye on that one. Yeah. Phyllis, mate. Phyllis Slimcock. I hope she's got the same last name as you. I hope you <laughs> lock that You'll be one changing up. her name to Phyllis to fill her if you're not careful. <laughs> fill her Slimcock. <laughs> Uh, Feel it. <laughs> um, anyway, I'd best be off. I'm hanging out for your review of Dating on the Spectrum and think Jacob should apply for season three. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, I don't get it. It's not funny. Uh, debunked because I don't belong on the show. I cannot find love. It's actually called Love on the Spectrum, not Dating on the Spectrum. Yeah. You have incorrectly quoted the show. And I'm not retarded. Debunked. Cheers, boys. Much love, Phyllis and Sleep. Phyllis and Keith Slimcock. Beautiful. Well, thank you, thank you, Keith and Phyllis. Uh, you new character in the in the <laughs> OTAT u- universe. I love picturing her. I can, you know, I think she's out there. She's, you know, sitting back at the cardigan, a real Mrs. Claus type. I'm, yeah, I think she's a more like a, like an olive oil uh, to mm. to um, Popeye. Popeye. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, save me, Keith Slimcock, save me! A real damsel in distress, yeah. Yep. Oh, I'm trying to leave review, but the boys won't stop roasting. <laughs> and but he's just fucking eats a bag of spinach and goes back to his Netflix yeah, job. Yeah, just on there for Netflix. He's doing his best Robin Williams impression. That's, um, that's a lovely review. Thank you so much, Keith. I like that Keith wrote it completely on his own, but then he still signs off with his wife's name. Yeah. You know, he knows that she would give her stamp of approval. Maybe they're going through a rough patch and that's why she said, oh, um, they, they look pretty good on the eyes and now they're going through a divorce. So everything goes 50-50, including Keith's, uh, Keith waxing poetic in the YouTube comments. Right. They've signed a prenup on his poetry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Got it. Okay. Weird that he's pimping out his wife to the boys as well. <laughs> like, yeah. I know they're divorced and... I mean, does she get half of Otad as well? Yeah, p- gets... pimping it, pimping out a Popeye's uh, Penelope partner. Yeah. partner, and then in the same breath, uh, saying that I'm autistic. <laughs> I know you could get my wife, but I think you'd have a better better job going for someone who loves trains, Jake. Yeah, you're both easy on the eyes, but pff, my missus will have you. Um, yeah, weird to be like she's my I, she's much beloved and I stand by her dearly. She's a, she's a gem, and then also you know offer her up to to the mm. lads here. And look, maybe Wouldn't trust us. And look, we, we love the praise, but we do love the feedback even more. So the fact that you're bringing ideas like soundboard into the mix, maybe we do need to get you in as producer, Keith. Young Jamie, mm. still haven't filled the role. Mm. Waiting for the census results to come back. Young Slim C. Yeah, mm. Slim C. <laughs> he almost sounds like a rapper. <laughs> I bet he is. When he, when he says when he says uh, beautiful words like that on uh, on paper or electric paper, that was just like a a, a, a tight forty, a mm. tight a tight forty bars, you know. Yeah, yeah. Give me give me the real stuff. Mm. Um, but uh, enough about praise for our for our fans. We're going to give you what what you really want the the content you came for, which is uh, us reviewing Nine Now's documentary on the one and only Mark Brandon Chopper Reed. Yeah, Gorsi, are we? <laughs> hello, hello, little boys and girls. Hello. It's Chopper in his own fucking words over here. It's the most notorious kill Australia's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chopper in his own words uh, oh, is that's what it's what called. It's cold, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you can check that out, as I said, on Nine now. Um, it's about a forty-eight minute um, episode without uh, without advertisements, but. Knowing Channel 9, they pump about 40 dinnerly ads, which I was not too happy about after not eating dinner, yeah. and 40 sports bet, uh, or anti-gambling sports bet ads. How ironic is that? Yeah, they it felt like every commercial was speaking directly to you. Yeah. Hey, I haven't eaten. I've <laughs> been chucking on too many multis lately, mate. <laughs> Eat responsibly. Yeah. Yeah. Eat and gamble responsibly. Um, but... What did you think of Chopper, in his own words? Um, look, I I think, like, I would say a majority of Australians, and they, they kind of go into it in the doco, um, he's just an interesting character. Like, he's a train wreck. You can't... It's He's a, he's an eyesore, but you can't look away from him. Mm. Um, it's just a, a mesmerising character, I think, that the, the words they used. Um, the character himself, I, I love the movie, the movie starring Eric Banner, which they kind of go into a little bit, but the doco itself... It's it's just complete a current affair Channel Nine porn. Yeah, like they, they love using the alliterations, um, making a tale of torture uh, a tale of torture made tolerable. Yeah, 
that's fucked. Mm. You, there were times when you're watching it where you're like, it feels like I'm watching Nine News with fucking Andrew Lofthouse mm. just talking at me. It's like, it's the same writing employed in both. Yeah, when, when Chopper uh, goes into how he gets into trouble with credit card debt, they're just like, he always thought that it was fantastic when in fact the plastic did him wrong. Oh. Made him spastic. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, why are you talking to me like I'm a fucking four-year-old? <laughs> oh. Don't make everything wrong, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're alliterate. Yeah, like I can consume a story without it uh, rhyming. Um, but it was interesting to see his life because mm-hmm. it, it starts pretty much, oh, uh, well, when he's a young adult. They give about 60 seconds into like his childhood and then him at 15, he starts hitting the life of crime. Yeah. Which is, so this didn't have, a, didn't have many crime-free years, mm-hmm. young, young Chopper. Um, but essentially the whole... Doco is a compilation of his greatest interview moments. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, is that fair to say? It's very fair to say. It goes into, like, there's no, there's there's a little bit of a timeline, but it's also completely non-linear in the way they just, and not in a good way, where they just, they jump yeah. between stories about things that he did as far as his transgressions, we'll call them. Yeah. And then, yeah, the, 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 there's, there's, um, clips of his interviews throughout the the 70s and 80s when he's in and out of prison in the 90s once he's released a couple of books and then in the 2000s once he's on a current affair and he's got a kid yeah yeah so that uh, it's the whole thing could have been a lot shorter yeah like uh, the amount of times that we saw the same footage replayed Mm -hmm. like over and over again it's like oh you're trying to fill 50 minutes here yeah you're trying yeah you're the you're replaying a lot of shit here. The wells obviously run dry. For sure. Like, to compare it to, like, Framing Britney, where mm-hmm. there was, like, they could have gone on for two hours. I suppose that's not even in a current affair. They just branded it as, uh, sorry, mm-hmm. Channel 9. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually an American... Yeah, Channel 9 CBS production. Yeah, CBS production. Um, where, yeah, there's plenty of content in the, in the Framing Britney doco. Um, but in this, it was... They were clearly struggling. Like, they, they jumped to the... Uh, what was his name? Sid... Sid Collins. Sid Collins. They jumped to the Sid Collins story multiple times, which if you didn't know, basically if you don't know who Mark Chopper Reed is, um, he's probably like, after Ned Kelly, uh, Australia's most infamous uh, outlaw, I guess you could call him. Yeah, I'd say you, you'd you go Ned Kelly and then him. Yeah. 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 But professional criminal. Professional criminal. Um, uh, lots of times throughout, throughout the interviews that they show, he talks about... I've killed 19 people. That's my. Yeah. That's what I hang my hat on. Is that yeah. I'm I'm a celebrity hitman, basically. Yeah, braggadocious, mm-hmm. and that's how he's made his the name for himself. Yeah, but there, I think it's unfair to say it was just completely a highlight reel of his best 60 minutes and interview moments because mm. there was stuff I hadn't seen before of him, like interviews with him in prison, yeah. like in the prison yard and his skivvies, where he's like talking pretty gruesomely about. Cut like his mate cutting his ears off. Mm-hmm. There was some insightful shit that made me go, "Holy shit!" Yeah. And if you look at Chopper, and this is like part of the folklore of him, I think the the thing you notice most, the, the thing you notice first outside of his handlebar mustache is he doesn't have any fucking ears. No, his ears were. He got his ears. He was in prison and tried to get moved to an insane asylum for better protection because he knew that. It, he was public enemy number one um, in prison. So he originally went to prison after a few killings, um, or a few murders, I should say. Um, in 1978, he tried to kidnap a county court judge who was trying to arrest, I think, or like uh, put sentence one of his friends. Yeah. Um, in an effort to get his mate out of prison, he landed himself in prison. Yeah. For seven years. Some real big brain stuff there. I'm going to hold a gun to a judge's head. Yeah. I'm going to hold him hostage until he was like, that's not how the court system works. No, that's not how it works, bro. You gotta, you gotta go about this the smart way. Mm-hmm. So he went to prison. He was sent to prison for seven and a half years at that point in time. Um, uh, has been quoted saying that he murdered multiple people in prison because he didn't like their faces. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just became public enemy number one on the block. So he got his mate to chop his ears off mm-hmm. uh, to get try and get moved to an insane asylum. And even then, the, the judge was like, no. Yeah. He was like, that's... He could tell that he was doing it to be moved into a safer place. But also, like, if the, if the guy's getting his ears chopped off and, like, has no, uh, has complete high tolerance for the pain, it's just like, yeah. oh, just, like, I put my hands up to my ears and it just felt like little water trickling down, like, down my ears and I realised it was just 
blood fountains coming out the sides of my head. Yeah, you probably are a bit nuts. That's that's Joker territory, baby. Yeah, and he yeah, there was nothing he did that made the judge go, no, you're uh, you're. There's nothing he did that may that could make the judge say you're not sound of mind. Yeah, the judge just kept going, no, you're sane. It was almost like the judge going, no, I'm gonna punish you. I yeah. like I know I, I I see what you're saying and him saying like basically the judge is going, no, you might be. The, the craziest fucker in Australia, but yeah. we're just going to leave you to like to the worst possible um, sentence, which is in a maximum security prison, yeah. surrounded by other cri- uh, murderous criminals. Yeah, to rot. And mm-hmm. he's yeah, he said, "We say I'm as I'm as popular as a pork chop in a synagogue." Yeah, good stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, he he was doing it before Honey Badger was doing it. The the amount of flaws the guy has, you'd have to say that he's quite charismatic. He's a quippy motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he's quite witty. He's yeah. good for a pun, as much as he is killing people. He is, and like the 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 strangest thing is that like, if he never if he never said anything about his killings or anything like. Yes, he does look somewhat menacing, but that's also with the preconceptions of knowing everything about him, his handlebar moustache, his tattoos and everything. Mm. But the way he talks is, is is just calm. Like he's so calm throughout. He never raises his voice. Yeah. He never seems like he's he's like uh, outlandish with his emotions. Yeah. He's he's even go goes far goes as far to not really swear that often. He's like, stick it up your bum, mate. Yeah, he's yeah, he's like He's a codger. Yeah, he's a codger. He's kinda like the uncle at the barbecue. Mm. Like he doesn't because if you come across as super psycho and, mm. like, Ted Bundy just crazy, mm. you're not marketable. Like, they're not going to make a movie about you, probably. Because you have to... Even if you're a psycho... If, sorry, even if you're a killer, you have to be likable if you want to be, I don't know, a professional... A, a celebrity, villain. basically. Yeah, yeah. celebrity villain. Mm. Like, you have to be endearing in some way. So, yeah, I think that's why Australia gravitated towards him. Cause yes. He's just like, yeah, fucking, I, what did he say? I, um, I did 19 people. Yeah. The guy's like, what does that mean? Like, you killed them? He's like, well, yeah. Yeah, come on, mate. Trying like, to put it like that. Like, proudly would just hang his hat on saying, yep, I proudly killed 19 people. I've spent in and out, I've been in and out of prison for 24 years. He wrote three books. Uh, one of the books uh, called How to Shoot Friends and Influence People. Genius. Genius, absolutely. Another good quip from the big man. I think he was like Sydney Morning Herald's number one bestseller, at one, like bestselling author at one point. He knows his books. Mm. He's he's like the he's top of the book charts and also ripping off you know other self help books, How yep. to Lose Friends and Alienate People. He's it's, his references are fucking. He's a man. He's mm. a man. A man of intellect as much as he stabs cunts in the chest. So to to make matters worse and to really uh, push um, chop into the limelight. Not only was he writing books that were getting sold, um, they ended up making a movie in 2000 about him, um, but in like the early 2000s as well, um, for some reason, the, the Australian government decided to use him for multiple, like, uh, anti... So they used him as a drink-driving uh, spokesperson, yeah. saying, you're a murderer if you drink and drive. Yeah, he's um, saying, you're as good as me. Yeah. That's, so, that's like... Fucking smart though. It's cl- it's it's like it's uh, ethically blurry. It is ethically blurry. But at the same time, it's pretty clever. Yeah, it's him on camera, just in his dining room, mm-hmm. shot grainy like a home video, and him just looking down the lens, going, "If you get in the car and drive while you're pissed, you're no better than you're you're no better than me. You're a maggot and a murderer, a just mur- like me. Murdering maggot. Yeah, a murdering maggot, just like me. It's like whoa. Big Eminem. Yeah, you're a big M&M fan. You're a big bro. Marshall Mathers, mate. You're a big peanut M&M. <laughs> and the um, so it wasn't just it wasn't just the drink driving out. They also used him um, as the spokesperson for violence against women ads. Where yeah. it's like, if you if you fucking if you get um, put in jail for beating a woman, you fucking better not come like cross paths with me, mate, because you're yep. dead. Yeah. So even. He, even he has standards. Mm. You know, he's like, I, I shot my own ears off. I fucking kill, I stab people. But there's a code. I'm, so, I've never hit, never hit a woman. It's clever because, it, like, at the time, I can see those ads being super impactful, mm. and, um, you know, you have to wonder how effective these ads are. Like, every caver is a killer and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But if, if nothing else, it's a conversation topic at like a dinner party. Like, yeah. oh, have you seen the new Mark Chopper Reed ad? Yeah, you would. Yeah, no one's talking about. 
the every K over is a killer ad. Mm. You're talking about the fucking chopper read ad. Absolutely. But yeah, it's fucking like all yeah, the like domestic violence not the domestic violence ads, the like uh, toxic masculin- masculinity ads that are running at the moment with like mm. the little kid throwing the ball at the like the rewind or like the mute. Yeah, the and mute it's button. like unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. it's like fine campaign who knows how effective it is but I, I, if you had shopper like i've never heard someone talk about it mm. if you had fucking shopper like you yeah you talking about it yeah it doesn't matter how hypocritical it is because it is it, it, yeah. it screams hypocrisy getting yeah. like a a multiple time like the most infamous criminal in australia yeah to be like to a preach spokesperson you about hey yeah be the better person yeah it is like if I saw it back in the day, well, we weren't around, so we were very young, but, like, watching that, wouldn't you just be like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> you're going to tell me what to do? Like, I'm not about to go and hit my wife, but you're not the one to tell me not to do it either. I'll happily put a sawn-off shotgun into a bloke's face in a nightclub and blow his, bl- his bloody brains out, but I'm not going to smack my wife. Never. Because that's beyond the pale, man. <laughs> Some things you just don't do. Come on, mate. We've all got standards. Yeah. It's like, all right, bro. Um, but that would be, like, he wears his heart on his sleeve and that would be, I don't think he's lying when he says that. No. And like, with the relationships, because it goes into he his relationships, I don't think he was ever violent towards his wife. It doesn't seem that way because he had two wives throughout his uh, throughout his life. It was mm-hmm. Margaret and then Helen. Yeah. He married a, Mar- a woman named Margaret who uh, the, the biopic is based off yep. with Eric Banner is with Margaret and, and Chopper. Um, then he marries Helen, has a kid with her, and then Helen leaves him and he goes back to Margaret. But every interview, every time they speak to them, and it's not it's not just like a place of like, oh no, I, re- I really like uh, Mark. It's not like, it doesn't seem like a place of fear. It's definitely yep. like they're infatuated with him. Yeah, it's by all accounts, he's of, as violent as he was, he seems to never lay a hand on his on his wife. True gentleman. A true gentleman. <laughs> um, but it's still so... Ultimately, it's fucked up that, like, the government made ads glorifying mm. a killer. Yeah, absolutely. Because instead of him just being a common... Just a common crook, or not a common crook, like a pretty uncommon crook, but it just became this larger-than-life character. Yeah. And now, like, I mean, put it this way, I didn't realise that he was dead up until we watched the doco. Died in October 2013, so I probably too do vaguely remember that. But even before that, I was like, we're going to put this episode of the podcast out because mm. he chopper might come for us. He's like the boogeyman. Yeah. Yeah. He's dead, so we're fine. It's well, just his... Yeah, or he, or, he's, or he comes back and haunts us. Yeah, absolutely. Z- zombie chop. The ghost of Chopper Reed. Zombie Reed. <laughs> yeah, zombie Chopper Reed. <laughs> Comes out all fucked up. I mean, he already—he was fucking already yellow. So. Mm. Oh yeah. So he—he he just gets like worse and worse as like the the interviews go on. So they mm. do the seventies and eighties ones, which he seems cool, calm, and collected. He's laughing throughout all of them. Um, and then they get to the one of like him in two thousand and seven, oh, and the guy—he he looks like a Simpsons character. He's that yellow. Yeah. He's got hepatitis C and liver cancer yeah. and he's just got this, this massive bulge coming out of his stomach that looks like a like a steed and that's been sewed into his fucking into his gut he, t- he takes his shirt off in the he's doing the it was a 60 minutes interview yeah. it was big at the time I remember it was actually 2013 2013 yeah. that's right it was big when it came out um, the I think Melissa Downs the, the would have been just before he died then yeah yeah it was it was just before he died and he takes his sh- he never looked healthy throughout his whole life but he takes his shirt off and he's laying on the ground all of his fucked up taps are all over him, and yeah, it's just all and his scars and his stab wounds, mm. and just this fucking tumor. I was like, cut that thing out, man! You can, it looks like Alien is about to jump, like pop out. Of the yeah, room. yeah, Xenomorph. Xenomorph. Yeah, fucking Ridley Scott's in there directing the sixty minutes <laughs> episode. Um, it was gross. Mm. So yeah, the guy seemed indestructible because he reckons he got stabbed twice in the heart. Mm. He got pretty much gutted. Like, yeah. intestines were falling out of his stomach and then they just sewed him back up. The thing that stopped him was a bit of hep and some, some yeah. cancer. Yeah. Well, he, just, he said he smoked like a chimney his whole life. Mm-hmm. He said he didn't drink, but he just ate fatty foods, just ate like shit. Like, mm. never looked healthy. Yeah. It wasn't a, it wasn't a beacon of health. But, but then he was saying, uh, my doctor swears that I'll never die of a heart attack. You've got the heart of a 19-year-old. Mm. It's like, what, dude? How? Like, you've yeah. just been blessed with godly genetics where yeah. it's not going to be your ticker that gives out after yeah. all the shit that you've been through. Yeah. Because he's... 
a true psychopath in the way that he's probably operating at 60 beats per minute his whole life. Yeah. Even when he's stabbing someone in the face That's in public, true. he's probably just bomb. Yeah. Bomb. Yeah. You can tell by the way he retells the stories. Yes. So calm. He's just like, yeah, I, um, and then I tied the sheets around his neck. And it's, then... it's like someone just retelling a yarn, just like, yeah. oh, yeah, just, um, yeah, work was all right. Just yeah. like went to, just came out and like went to a club and then there was someone that I didn't really like there. So I pulled a sawn off shotgun out and just, yeah, yeah bang. Just fucking, and then off he goes. Mm. Uh, put him in the ground. It's like, what? where? He doesn't realize that everyone's like, where? Tell us specifically where. I told you, Casino, New South Wales. Can you tell me specifically where? No, I can't bloody tell you. I don't bloody remember. It was on, it was near the side of a hill somewhere. He's like, well, yeah, it's in that Melissa Downs interview. Um, he goes, he says, oh, I put him in the ground. He's talking about Sid, Sid Collins. Yeah, Sidney Collins. So if you don't, so Sidney Collins, uh, there's a history between them and they go, go um, they explain it throughout the, the doco, the president of the outlaw motorcycle gang. Yeah, so he's kind of like his big villain, like, sorry, his big, they're both villains, his big antagonist or mm -hmm. his enemy throughout his career yep. in the, the most public limelight. The Lex Luthor to our Australia's Superman. Yeah, um, and they had beef... He shot him in the, a chopper shot Sid Collins in the chest. At his wedding. At his wedding. And then took him to the hospital. Mm. He shot him in the chest, took him to the hospital. and Is this the same guy? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Shot him in the chest, took him to the hospital and said, are you going to dub on me? And he's like, no, I swear. He's like, you're not a rat, are you? He's like, no. He's like, all right, well, I'll take you to the hospital. Fucked up. And then he did dub on him. Yep. He ratted. And then of he course, was like, he shot me in the chest. Yeah, and then... Chopper couldn't understand that. He's like, what, mate? That's like breaking the criminal code. It's that a we dog act, man. <laughs> you just, just cave my chest in with a bullet. I'm telling, I'm going to the cops, bro. Yeah. Um, so then eventually Chopper's doing one of his fucked up presentation nights where he does stand up and like tells yarns of when he killed people. Yeah, he gets paid as a spokesperson to come to like these rural parts of Australia to be like, hey, go on guys, I'm Chopper Reed, I'm your local hero. As a bunch of drunk guys, he's like, yeah, mate, you're cheering on this murderer. Mm -hmm. it's like, All right, how do we get here? Wall to wall Southern Cross tattoos. Yeah. Um, and who comes up to get a t-shirt signed at the end of the show, but Sid Collins. Mm. And Chopper's like, the fuck are you doing? He's like, yeah, mate, I'm fucking... But well, he's Sid Collins goes up and he's like, "Oh, I thought it was all good. Like, I, can I just get the shirt signed?" And John was like, "What? No, absolutely not." Yeah. And then he he's like, "Oh, we'll see you backstage after the show, though. Come back." And he's like, "Yeah, all right." And then he says that night he put him in the ground. Yeah. Like, what? And then it, she yeah Melissa Downs is like, "Where did you do it?" He's like, "Oh, casino, New South Wales." And she's he's like, oh, she's like, "Can you be more specific?" He's like, "Oh, I don't fucking remember. It was like." near a football field and near some hills. Yeah. I'm like, you're given enough information for them to go and find this body, dude. 100%. How many football field... Like, that narrows it down hugely. To, like, half a dozen. Yeah, yeah, it's like, they'll probably find Get it. Get some sniffer dogs out. They'll, yeah. find, they'll find that corpse. Yeah. I'm not going to bloody dig him up. I'm, not, I'm an old man. Yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm yellow. Look at me. <laughs> I'm Homer Simpson over here. Oh, him. he was, yeah, like, like, sickly yellow. Yeah, yeah. And when he took his shirt off, I guess that's what liver cancer does, makes you yellow. Mm. But it was just his face. Like, when he took his shirt off, it was like a tan line of yellow. Like, his chest was white. It kind of looked like one layer of bad fake tan on his torso, and then yeah. his face looked like someone dipped him in mustard. Yeah. Or honey, yeah, honey mustard honey sauce. Honey mustard, yeah. Mm. Mm. Chef's kiss. Yeah, I shouldn't be talking about food. Honey mustard <laughs> shopper <-y. laughs> Um The fact that we used him... Well, the fact that he is a, you know, he's a Ned Kelly type, he's a glorified villain or yep. whatever, a, a, an anti-hero. Why does Australia glorify? Like, why have we got? Are we the only people who go look at Ned Kelly and go, he's a sick cunt, and then look at Chopper Reed and go, he's a sick cunt? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I haven't studied other countries like villains enough. I'm sure there's there's other countries that have like villains that they glorify to a certain extent. Mm. Um, probably people who lead like rebellion, uh, like rebellion um, mm. movements and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I like out, like outlaw hero outlaw culture feels like it's exclusively Australian. It is romanticized for yeah. sure. Um, Someone because we're all yeah. We're gonna say somewhat like America's got like Billy the Kid. I guess is it is he? He's not yeah. fictitious, is he? Uh, I don't know, but I like um, uh, who's the couple? Um, 
Thelma and Louise? Not, no, nah, the ones who uh, like shot up every all, all the banks and shit. They were bank robbers. Oh, uh, not Jesse. Jesse, no. Um, there's like oh, fucking. There's, there's so many movies about them. They, you know, outlaw couples. Um, John Dillinger, mm. like shit, like like yeah. I suppose they do have them over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I was gonna say it's it could be because we came from convicts convicts mm. and then we're like if yeah, like we are we are very fuck the police over here it's part of our mongrel mentality yeah mm. fucking mongrel dogs um but maybe. yeah but yeah. I, we're not going to solve these questions no but i i do agree that there's there's something like i mean whether it's we we, we romanticize the idea of it or whether we like it's just a case of that it's just so fascinating that we're like no give me more air time because i need to know what's running through this psycho's brain yeah and uh, yeah, it's just I feel like there's a difference between you know Ted, uh, a film on Ted Bundy like mm-hmm. the Zac Efron thing to mm-hmm. give an insight into a psychopath, and going to a show where a, a killer tells yarns about him killing and yipping and Yahoo and in the crowd as you drink piss. Yeah, like that doesn't you don't get the Ted Bundy chopper eat experience where you like go and get a Stein beer and fucking watch Ted Bundy talk about how he killed people. For sure. I mean, watching, like, we both said that we haven't seen it in a while, but watching Eric Banner's Chopper, all, all you do is rooting for the guy. It's psycho. Mm. It's crazy, hey? Mm-hmm. That movie, we watched, they, we watched the trailer and they have clips of uh, the film in this doco. He was a, such a scary man. Yeah. Eric Banner's transformation to, to Chopper was fucked uncanny go and watch chopper eat again such a good fucking movie fantastic movie again you haven't seen it in so long but all you need to do is look at the shape that he got in Mm -hmm. and the and he and the menacing like playing that would be so hard you're like i've got to be terrifying and uh playful and like jovial at the same time yeah to strike that balance to be like the joker but not a not a mean not a cringe machine right yeah. it's like a real life joker mm. so it's like just lay back like yeah i could shoot you before you got he, to the he door. is the australian joker i guess yeah yeah he really is because he's like endearing but also i can fucking kill you if i want to exactly right yeah psycho shit and he and eric banner was i was saying to you before this he strictly did comedy before. Mm, that's the craziest thing this was his debut big like acting um, yeah. coming out show he was doing the castle and like uh, the comedy factory like skit shows back mm. in the 80s and 90s and then he's like okay let me put on 40 kilos and be the scariest man in Australia yeah and then just turned into one of Australia's best actors but yeah. started there when no one would give him a chance well they obviously did give him a chance but to go from comedy into like one of the most riveting acting yeah. uh, renditions we've ever seen. Yeah. Scary, scary man. Mm. Um, and like, yeah, fucking goat actor as well. Yeah. Um, but they were saying that he, the Chopper's image after that film came out, like his his profile just went through the fucking roof. Oh, 100%. I mean, they had like the, we haven't touched on it at all, but the, the Ronnie John's half hour sketch, yeah. which... It's funny for all of about three and a half seconds. So one note. Mm. If you guys remember what we're talking about, there's the comedian, uh, that fat comedian, his name is like Heath, no, it's Heath something. Heath Franklin? Yes. Heath mm. Franklin. He comes out and he's like, Hey, g'day guys, I'm fucking Chopper Reed. <laughs> Hello, little man. boys and girls. <laughs> Hello, how the fuck are we? We watch on YouTube, it's like him doing a job interview. He's like, G'day, how the fuck are we? Now, don't sit down in the seat because they'll think you're a bitch. <laughs> you gotta stand up the whole time. It's just, it, yeah, very dated. It's like footy show crowd, like audios, audience just go, Oh, <laughs> very good. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. I get it because he's cool, people. <laughs> Imagine putting him in an office. Yeah. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> it's the same joke over and over again. The interviewers are like, so Chopper, what would you bring to the role? And he's like, oh, I'd bring a 22 Glock. I'd bring this 12 gauge <laughs> shotgun. Gun. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Stick of dynamite. Another gun. Another stick of dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. The crowd laps it up every single time. Oh, very good. <laughs> oh, good, good. You got any weaknesses? And he's like, lamingtons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, peach tarts. Yeah. Like, what? They're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I'm fat, get it? <laughs> G'day, boys and girls. So, uh, taking that all into account, mm. uh, what would you rate Channel 9's telling of Chopper in his own words? Mm. I would give it... Can I can I mellow on it while you give yours? Yeah, I suppose I like I liked it from this perspective that, again, it's, it 
use the metaphor before, but he's he's just a train wreck. Like mm. it's it's he's a horrifying depiction of a human being, if you mm. want to call it that. But at the same time, you can't look away. He, he's they, they say it multiple times. He's mesmerizing whenever he talks. Yeah. You 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 cling on to every word he says. Um, so I would probably rate this. But that being said, um, Channel One just they have this like clickbait mm. way of telling stories where it's like obviously they've got to they've got to run ads so it's like stay tuned and we're going to tell you this but there's just mm. the 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 timing of jumping between like him killing people coming out of prison and then jumping back to the Sydney Collins story yeah moving to Tasmania back to Sydney Collins like there just wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason to it no. so um all in all this telling of Chopper's story I would give five and a half uh seven ears out of ten Five and a half. Mm. That's a fair rating. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty much in agreement with you. It's um, I definitely found out a lot about the man that I didn't know before, mm. and I think it does give you a good uh, depiction. It goes beyond the meme, mm. you know, like be, beyond the because he there's some pretty sad scenes at the end of it where he's an old man and he's sitting there as um he's dirt broke. He, yeah. He goes, oh, when credit cards came out, they should have locked me in a closet. Mm. Like I should not be allowed near a credit card. He grew up with no money and it came out of the prison system and was like, what's this piece of plastic that gets me whatever I want? And so they just approved him straight away. Just approved him. Like, oh, Chopper Reed, he mm. seems out of mind to yep. get himself into debt. He can pay this back, right? Surely. Um, and he... So there's those scenes that humanise him at the end of his life when he's bankrupt and he's broke and... Uh, he's trying to be a father. Trying to be a dad. He's got a kid... And he's like starting to value human life. Mm -hmm. um, all the while, the Ronnie Johns half hour guy is like memeing him. And he's like, oh, I guess I'm a cartoon character now. Yeah. He's just being fucking, ha ha, look at me, kids. It's just hard to have sympathy for someone that not only did all those horrible things, but then lived off being a suit, like a rock star. Like, yeah. three time bestseller, Sydney Morning Herald bestseller. Yeah. Like, um, obviously, you probably had um, some sort of residuals from the movie made. Yeah. Yes, like you do, you do feel some sort of um, some pity for him when he's like the only emotion he shows throughout it. Um, sorry to just hijack your no, your review, but the only the only point when you see any sort of emotion in him is remorse. Is remorse where he's got his his, his brow furrowed, talking about how he's in debt and how he's got to mm -hmm. try and take care of his kid with no money and how like his kid's gonna grow up to know that his dad's a you know a, a f Australia's most famous murderer. Yeah, he. Yeah, it's a man in pain mm. in those interviews. Like, he's literally just, like, like uh, squinting through life. Yeah. Like, he's facing, like, a hard breeze all the time that's, like, cutting him in the face. It's cringing. Yeah, yeah, it's just, like, cringing through life. He's like, oh, that hurts. That hurts. Not physically, but just, like, emotionally, everything's a bit bad. If you if you thought what you did 10 years ago was cringeworthy, trying to <laughs> murdering 10 people. Yeah. <laughs> 19, sorry. I got so drunk on my 21st and blacked out. He's like, oh, I murdered 21 people. I stabbed a guy in the face seven to the... <laughs> I, I, I went to prison and I... This is a true a story that he tells. I went to prison and I laid a guy out on the floor and then I jumped off the bunk bed on his head seven times and on his chest multiple more times. Yeah. Got his shoelaces, tied his hands behind his back and got a bed sheet, hung him up and then hung him to death and then the guards the next morning thought the guy committed suicide. Yeah, framed his own suicide. Mm. So we've all got regrets. We all, we, we've all been down that road before. If you're sitting there thinking like, oh, I shouldn't have done so many jello shots in front of my parents <laughs> on my 18th. It's like, well, this guy killed people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't feel any remorse. And wrote 18 books about it afterwards as well. Yeah. And obviously had no idea how to handle his money because, yeah, he was... He would have been making cash off those, obviously. Do you imagine how big he would have been in the social media era? Yeah. Huge. Mm. Yeah, this is all pre-social pre media. Um, so... You're right. It's really hard to feel sympathy for a guy who lent into it for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't... I want it all, I want it all, I want it all. And then it's... It, becomes too much and he becomes, as Channel 9 so eloquently put it, a prisoner of his own fame and mm. myth. Like, which intern did you pay for that one, Channel 9? <laughs> World's <laughs> smallest violin. <laughs> Laid over a shot of him in prison. It's like, we get it! <laughs> the metaphor's strong, dude! Um, so, 
it is hard to sympathise with them. I was mm. going to make one more point. What was I going to say? I can't fucking remember. Well, tell us what your your rating is. Um, I would give it six. I'm okay. going to go higher than you. I'm going to mm-hmm. go six and a half. It's not a contest. I'm going to go but higher. Because I'll stab more I, people than you do. I like it more than you, so okay. I win this one. <laughs> right. I'll hopefully make it out of this alive. <laughs> um, six and a half god awful tattoos out of ten. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he had some shot. What did he have more of, tattoos or scars? Yeah, I don't know. Or tumours mm. towards the end of it. Oh, it was just one massive tumour. Yeah. Just bigger than his head. Disgusting. You could see, oh, and he's like, it's a big fucking <laughs> tumour, isn't it? He's lying down on the prison floor with his shirt off. And it's like, um, the journalist just kind of like, tries to help him down. Yeah, but he's, he's like, he just like, wise in, he's just kind of like, wincing in pain. He's like, oh, my fucking, my gut. <laughs> what is it, your breakfast? No, I'm good. Got a fucking cancer the size of a child. The size of a rock melon <laughs> in the belly. So that's just kind of getting me down today, just I guess. Pulsating. <laughs> it is too. Oh. <laughs> the thing is throbbing. It's like, oh, I just felt a kick. Didn't oh. know men could give birth. Rest, rest in peace to uh, Australia's greatest dirtbag. Greatest, yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's where you were going. Right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so if you have made it this far into our breakdown of uh, Chopper in his own words, thank you so much for listening or watching on the air tonight. If you did enjoy this, uh, share it with your friends, with your family. Give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram so you keep up to date with everything OTAP. Leave a review. Yes, leave a review because we will definitely read it out and dox you and accuse you of uh, some heinous things if you praise yourself in third person. Don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.